sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support you will show me here with i am grateful do not forget to subscribe and smash that thumb up so today we'll be talking something very important and it's about a video going round about asian americans stressing out because of affirmative action now you all remember that black people warned them right from the onset you know they were actually angry because they think that black people are the major people that benefits from affirmative action right and black people told them no we don't even benefit much anything than pump colored people and every other person so i think they said that they wanted uh they wrote a they wrote a petition uh, asking for affirmative action to be struck out so it will be easier for them to get into college or people can get into like prominent uh, universities without knowing where they are from but as it stands i am sorry it is not going the way they wanted because what they wanted was to sideline black people and get what they are looking for and then not knowing that the pawn colored people are using them as pawns pawns against themselves too not just against black people their plan was to do this against black people but as it stands they are all stressed out they are all worked up they are all seeing like the result of what they did let's get into this video hmm. well what do you know surprise surprise we tried to tell them black people tried to tell them black people tried to tell a small group of asians that included yutin chu and the asian kid from canada that working with white supremacist ed bloom will not give you better chances in getting into these elite colleges like harvard and yale mm -hmm. a group of people of color worked with the white supremacists who's been working for decades to gut affirmative action and gut voting rights so that he can stifle the growth of black people in this country. And black people tried to tell Asians like Miss Yatin Chu that black people wasn't the biggest group who benefited from affirmative action that it was white women but no they didn't want to listen to us they didn't want to listen to us when we said that white supremacists have made black people the face of certain benefits in this country when we aren't the biggest recipients of these benefits affirmative action welfare we aren't the biggest benefits of these actions but this small group of Asians who I believe were anti-black, are anti-black, continue to press forward to work with this white supremacist to stifle and push down black people so that they can elevate and have better chances in getting into these elite colleges and universities. Black people tried to tell this small group of Asians that Ed Bloom, a white supremacist, is using you as pawns to get his agenda completed. Black people tried to tell this small group of Asians that it's not black people here in the United States that you are competing with. Mm -mm. You're competing with legacy students. You're competing with athletes. You are competing with black students all across the diaspora. And so now that we are in the first application season since the overturning of affirmative action, Asian students are stress stressed out. They're freaking out because they are now realizing that race will still be a factor when they submit their applications. Why? Because there's no hiding 
your name, Asian students. And now that you are realizing that, you are also realizing that racist white people who work in these positions, in these offices that hold your future in their hands, they will continue to be racist towards you. Yep. Yep. We tried to tell Asians like Miss Chu that Ed Bloom was using them as pawns. And she got indignant and went over on her Twitter account and said, telling us we are pawns is demeaning and belittles our fight for our civil rights in America. What Miss Chu fails to realize is that when you as a member of a minority group goes after a benefit, a right that they believe affects another minority group only, and you work to get that benefit removed so that you can benefit, because you can't tell me Miss Chu doesn't think that the only reason black people get into Yale and Harvard is because of affirmative action. And Asians like Miss Chu said we need to get rid of affirmative action because black people shouldn't be in Harvard and Yale because we are more smart, we are more deserving. So we're going to work to knock out this minority group so that we can benefit. And now all of these kids who are getting ready for college are now realizing that, yeah, racist white people will continue to be racist white people. And now there's no quota that they have to meet. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? They are they 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 are meeting with um, academic consultants, academic consultants and paying tens of thousands of dollars to start preparing their children in junior high school. They are paying thousands of dollars to go to seminars so these coaches can tell them and guide them on how best to get into these elite colleges. They are taking 10 to 20 um, advanced placement courses, hoping that it will boost them <laughs> so that they can get into these elite colleges. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. And they are doing all of this in the hopes of battling the extreme discrimination that they know that they will now face. They can't hide behind the race. Their name on the application will tell the racist white person that's evaluating their application everything they need to know about that student. And now the light bulb has gone off. Hmm. This is what you call cutting off your nose to spite your face. Mm -hmm. And in other news, water is wet. Well, in news this morning, I would like to talk about an article from the LA Times in regards to post-affirmative action. Asian American families are more stressed than ever about college admissions. Now, listen, if you have been following this, you remember there was a certain person who sued and demanded that affirmative action be removed, was successful, and the Supreme Court said, sure, we'll remove it. But let's take a look at what has happened to the Asian community since then. Now, listen, this is not about being uh, anti-Asian or anything like this, but the conversation must be had. Uh, you can stop and read. The conversation must be had about how the solidarity between people of color, POC, um, will need to be discussed obviously in a more nuanced level. But here we see how the Asian community absolutely will come together in multiple ways to ensure that their children um, get into these colleges. I think the conversation needs to be had with the Asian community. And before anybody comes for me, 
because you can't. Um, I'm half Asian. Um, I know that phenotypically, I don't look it, um, depending on the lighting and depending on how I wear my hair. But this type of cultural difference um, is not going to get your kids into Harvard. Um, these extra pushes uh, are not going to get them into MIT. These are legacy schools. These schools are not built for ethnic people. Okay. Um, and the proof is right here. It's going to be harder for Asians, they say, to get in. Full disclosure, I'm a mom of four. I have one already in college, one in about two years. One didn't take any AP classes, didn't take any extracurricular. He played football. That's a different story. But my next one, currently taking AP classes, not because I want her to push to get into Columbia, where she probably wants to go, although we've had that conversation. She needs to go to mommy school. No, no, I'm just playing. Um, because I got legacy status. Why wouldn't you go to the school where I have legacy status? She wants to go to a school where she doesn't have legacy status. Then she needs to be prepared for those who have legacy status. She has a great resume, top five to 10 percentile in the city does all the right things. I'm already preparing her for the obvious, which is widen your pool. Don't stress. College is about experience more than it is about education. And this is coming from someone who has several degrees. Well, just two. Working on the third. I just read this. Post affirmative action, Asian American families are more stressed than ever about college admissions. We're talking about Harvard and Stanford, those schools. I really don't know what's clicking. It's going to be hard to get into Harvard no matter what. It's always going to be hard to get into these schools. There are so many schools, good schools in every single state. You don't have to go to those five, seven schools. It's not that many of those. And they're not taking in everyone. Like, they just can't. They can't. They won't. They can't and they won't. We know that they won't, which is why we had the affirmative action to begin with. But now, they don't even have to do that. So they sure ain't letting y'all in for real now. The college application process can be so overwhelming and so stressful for all types of students and families. But the LA Times had a recent article that just came out describing how Asian American families and students are really feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, especially since the Supreme Court ruling in June that struck down affirmative action in college application and admissions decisions. Hmm. But who originally brought that lawsuit to the court in the first place? Let's investigate. In the first college application season, since the Supreme Court struck down affirmative action, Asian American families are more stressed out than ever about college admissions. Hmm. As this commenter here said, I wonder why that is. After the affirmative action ruling, Asian Americans ask, what happens next? And to that I say, welcome. Welcome to the stress that we have all been feeling since forever because we tried to warn you we told you this would happen when you align yourself with certain people and certain factions thinking that they'll open their arms to you and they'll want you on their campuses and they'll welcome you with open arms look they played you they did the old rope dope the okie doke on you and you can thank this man right here edward bloom who helped that young man bring that court case to the Supreme Court to end affirmative action in college admission processes. Edward Bloom, who's famous for his activism against affirmative action, yeah, that Edward Bloom, is the reason why y'all are now feeling stressed out post that decision in June. Because Asian American students felt that they were being discriminated against and that black American kids were taking all the spots on Ivy League campuses. Legacy admissions were the ones taking your spots, not us. However, did you know that there are tons of scholarships that you can apply to? 
Oh, wait, those are now under attack also. People are now actively trying to get rid of minority and ethnic and diversity scholarships because they discriminate against other types of people. In college admissions, there are no guarantees. 10 AP classes, a stacked resume, dual enrollment, none of that matters. All the money in the world and private college counselors can't compete with someone who's a legacy from an Ivy League school. Oh, look at that. Asian Americans signing on to be used as tools of white supremacy to dismantle affirmative action did nothing to address the discrimination faced by Asian Americans in college admissions. Because dismantling affirmative action didn't address the fact that selective colleges admit Asian American applicants at a rate 28% less than similarly qualified white applicants. It's almost like the discrimination faced by Asian Americans in college admissions never had anything to do with black students or affirmative action and had everything to do with legacy admissions and the choices that colleges make to discriminate against Asian Americans in order to give preferential treatment to lesser qualified white students. If only black people had tried to warn us. Oh wait, they did. If colleges admit Asian American applicants at a rate 28% less than similar. So I kind of have this theory that the Asian Americans who were signing up for this affirmative action to be removed um, out of the, the disguise of, oh, it's about we just want a fair, we just want fairness in the application pro process. I don't think they actually cared about fairness. I really think that their whole thought process was that if they could eliminate black people from having the opportunity, that they could themselves take up those spots. Because just think about it, like there was this idea that there's a certain amount of, um, you know, percentage of selected from each demographic. And I think they cared more about eliminating one demographic so that they could take up those more percentages of those spots than they actually cared about the fairness of it all because if they actually wanted all fairness they would have really went in for everything to make it where unqualified white people were getting into college and signing on to be used as tools of white supremacy to dismantle affirmative action did nothing to they're still stressed out because they're not getting accepted they can have a 4.41 gp as his article notes and still not get accepted and a lot of the issue is the fact that People don't care about your GPS more. They care about your social skills. These schools want a well-rounded person. A 4.41 is great, but or do you have social skills? And getting rid of affirmative action did nothing to really help them. There are many Asian American students who were all gone whole on this, and yet the end results didn't assist them at all. They ignore that their biggest competition are legacy students. And just a reminder... Taking away opportunities for oppressed people doesn't make your oppression go away either. As this article points out, the discrimination is still there because your last name is still on the application. The affirmative action that they wanted to get rid of did nothing to harm them or take away their chances or opportunities. It was a college decision not to accept them. Colleges admit Asian American applicants at a rate 28% less than similarly qualified. I'm sure the person that I stitched already knows this, but if not, here's some information for you. And for anybody else watching this, the person who led the charge to get affirmative action repealed, like the thing that was like Asian Americans against affirmative action, whatever the organization was called, that was a white man. And he found a couple Asian people to be like, tell us your story of why you didn't get accepted because of affirmative action. There is a culture of Asian Americans being like, oh, it's not fair. But overall... It's not, overall, for most Asian Americans, doesn't exist. That was one white man who did it and used Asian American, like like the, sh the book Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong. It was like that, but with fucking Congress or, or Supreme Court, excuse me. Nobody cares. Nobody cares that you are trying to be perfect or you're, you're climb to perfectionism. Nobody cares. The people at the admissions office don't care. You want to know why they don't care? It's because they aren't perfect and they never strive for perfectionism. The thing that many Asian Americans didn't see and possibly still don't see is that nobody cares. How much money you spend on preparing and preparing and preparing and your GPA can be seven. What you're failing to see with all of your academic achievements is this. You're failing to see reality. 
reality trumps academics. See, reality is this. Those who are over admissions are people, and people are not perfect. And those same people are going to choose who they want. And because you got rid of affirmative action, see, you made it even easier for them to choose who they want to come to their schools. Also, you didn't think about this because reality trumps academics. There may be some of those same people who are pretty pissed and don't like perfectionists or those who feel like they should have been ahead of somebody because they made a whole 9, 10, 11, 12 points higher. Sometimes people tend to look at people like that as they feel entitled to something. And that can bite you in the butt because if you feel entitled to something just because of some random classes you took or the thousands of dollars you paid to prepare, then in their minds, they may disqualify you. Now, if they write that on paper, that's something different. But you need to think about reality because reality always trumps academia. This is unfortunate. I'd have the Ivy Blues, too, if after 21 AP credits, um, you know, stressing myself out for these SAT scores, paying a consultant thousands of dollars to review my application, and I still don't get chosen. All those book smarts, and somehow is not translating to critical thinking skills, because now Edward Bloom now has a license to go around and destroy any mentorship program, grants, scholarship programs for special populations, gone. Was it worth it? The Fearless Fund, he's already annihilated that. A grant program that was helping a population of less than 1% to gain some sort of opportunity, just a little bit of money to start a business. Was it worth it? This is a- so now that we've teamed up and worked together to sort of, you know, finally strike down this affirmative action that was keeping our well-performing Asian students out of these Ivy League schools, we're finally gonna see more of us in those schools, right? Right? Sorry, pal, I uh, think we're actually just gonna sneak in a few more legacies. But it was nice working with you, though. Oh. Wait, so you just used us? Used is a little harsh, don't you think? Oh. What? What? No. No, this, they wouldn't. No, they didn't do. What? No, you're telling me they used you? They used racial tensions to, what? No, no. No, they wouldn't. No. No, who would have thought? Not me. Not me. <laughs> Just tools of white supremacy. Oh, it didn't go well? The white people didn't welcome you with open arms? Reading this article and, the, and other articles that I've read about this, it just seemed like they thought that when the Supreme Court made the decision that they would have automatically kicked out every single black person in the school. That's what they thought was going to happen. But now it's even harder because it's getting harder every single year. We just watched a bunch of celebrities buy and rich people buy their kids' seats into these Ivy League schools and cheat to get in. No smoke for them, though. But the problem is anti-blackness. That's the damn fucking problem. Because why would you align yourself with white supremacists? Sure, they don't like us, but they don't, they don't like you either. These people have been trying to get rid of affirmative action for years now. They finally did it with, with their help. And it's not faring very well for them. Because it was never about their affirmative action. It was about like why we had why we need affirmative action to begin with. It does it, this like this woman said in the video, it doesn't it doesn't explain any it doesn't fix any of the problems that we have well, that we've been having. None. It just made things more complicated, more messy. There was a woman in the, one of the articles that I read who said that a girl whose mother had cancer was lucky because that's what got her in. Because you need adversity. You need like a struggle. And that's the only reason why she wasn't. She got in because her mother had cancer. 
because she was able to use that in her college essay. When they see these black kids in school, they don't think, oh, that's a fellow classmate. They think, oh, how did this N get in here? Because this N doesn't deserve to be here. This person is stole a seat that belonged to somebody else. That's that's the damn damn that's the damn issue because everybody coming in here has a high GPA. You need at least a three point eight to get in here, and people have five point twos. And now they and the articles they're they're not blaming black people anymore. They're blaming these like college advisors, people th- they pay stacks of money to to help to help them get into these schools. They're blaming them. It's shifted now, but it's like. The damage has has been done. We already see what was what's what's going on. Like I said, they may not like us, but they don't like you either. So this is all I got. Excuse me. This is all I got from this video. And sincerely speaking, I really like you know. I remember during uh, when affirmative action was struck out, and a lot of people, especially the Asians, were like you know saying that uh, it's better that like it is the way it is struck out that uh they can do uh you know better and all that uh, that is better they like you know uh it is better they struck it out because they feel like black people are the ones mostly uh getting from me and then black people actually told them that this thing you people are struck you struck out we are not the cause we are not the reason why you all or some of you all are not getting admission because to them they said that black people are the reasons why reason why some of them are not getting admission into harvard and some other prominent uh universities and all that and then they wrote a they wrote petitions to struck out uh, affirmative action which was already like done and as it stands right now they are all tensed out they are all stressed out that uh, uh, the reason why they wanted this to, uh, to, like, you know, they do not want to be judged based on your race or where you're from or something. But now it is that uh, they will be like, you know, once they, they will know where you are from, your race and all that. Black people have been telling them all these years because one thing with Asians is that Asian Americans is that they are trying so hard to fit into this white supremacy thing like you know they really want to be bad white so bad that all sometimes what they do is they look for a way to do things that will affect black people most times they do things thinking that it is going to affect black people but then it backfires i love to see things like this happen because some of them are really are really really like you know crazy because if you are not damaged, why would you like, you know, why would you think black people are the ones benefiting from it? And all you want to do is to block it. Black people told them that they are, you all are being used as pawns and you all do not understand this. But in the end, you all are going to understand that uh, it is not we against you. And now. They are beginning to understand that they are doing nothing but helping palm colored people to achieve their white supremacy. Now, as it stands, they are boiling. They are going through it. And I love the fact that they are going through it because they think it's all like, you know, we are supposed to, uh, like, how are we supposed to benefit from some certain things? Because all the time, they are always like, why is it always black people always black people but now you all understand that all the things so what is that these people do not listen to black people they don't listen to black people they think black people are just uh how do i say that they only fight for themselves and uh they forgot that black people sees ahead ahead of all of them and this is something that I have noticed. When black people want to scream, they scream the loudest. They, if, they, if something is affecting them, they are speaking out. They are saying it. They are not even like, you know, holding back. They speak it and they see ahead. 
because they have been through it. They know the people that they are dealing with. So they understand them. So when they were screaming it, telling Asians that you all better relax, that it is not you, we against you people, that this thing you all are doing will eventually backfire and they did not listen. They said black people are their problems. Now we know who the problems are. It is the people using you people against yourself. And I saw a video, somebody was saying it is not Asians against Africans or uh, sorry, African Americans or black people or African Americans against Asians that we should fight hand in hand. See, black people have been fighting hand in hand, looking for a way to fight hand in hand with you all, but you all don't listen. You all only come out when it is necessary or when, sorry, when it is convenient. When it is not convenient, you all don't come out. And you all always look for a way to, uh, like, you know, make black people feel like they are the real, pro uh, the real issue. When you all are the real problem. And now, black people are going to sit back and watch you all enjoy this choice you all called upon yourself. Enjoy it and see you all in my next video. Bye for now.